I, don't, I think this is 23. Pulling the Thread Podcast, episode 22 or maybe 23. Yeah, man, I'm talking about with it. Hey, look at that. 39 seconds. Was it 39 seconds? I don't know. We so what do you want to talk about today? I don't know. What do you want to There's talk about? There's a ton of stuff about in, in the news going on. I don't know if anything's <clears throat> going on in the news. The beauty of it is none of it affects us here. Does any of it affect us here? Okay, so when all these U.S. Know. dollars abroad yes. come home to roost? They're not coming home. When all these U.S. dollars come home to roost... These little riots they're having all over Chicago and Compton and shit right yeah, now. But that's not because of money. That's coming, because coming to a city near you. That's be, that's not because of, of course money. it's not. But the, when the that's, when uh, the when the people get hungry, the reality is the the reason why Chicago is having the problems that it has is because they have delinquent parents and they're letting their children act like children in the you know in the supermarket. And because they're not doing anything about it, those kids are flailing around on the floor screaming because they're not getting pop tarts. But yeah, th- none of those, none of those, none of those people you see rioting are hungry. Correct. None of them, correct. not a single one of them, because they're all using, correct. they're all using their cell phones to do meetups. It's not, it's not what it, you think. It's just a bunch of so, spoiled brats. And when asked about the riots, <clears throat> Lori Lightfoot as well as the incoming mayor mm-hmm. uh, both said. Um, those were mass protests against poverty and segregation. Do not use those hateful okay. words such as riots. Here's the problem. This is this yeah, is the biggest what are, problem. What have they been what have they been excluded from? This is the biggest problem. If that's true, if it's true, Chicago, if it's true It's your own you, fucking fault. You that you have a problem with segregation and poverty, it's because you keep electing terrible representatives it's because you keep allowing people like Lori lightfoot and this new idiot to be the mayor of your city so you she answered her own question they they really answered their own question you keep you keep electing the same idiots it's kind of like uh, uh flint michigan and their water problem the water problem they have is because democrats keep funneling that money into their pockets instead of fixing the fucking problem because they think that the federal government's going to jump in and save them it, it, every municipality has water problems so the federal government's not going to jump in and save you especially since your stupid asses have been collecting taxes for years and putting it in your pocket and not fixing the infrastructure stop electing these idiots what are they doing about the water like what do you Nothing. do you just import water yeah they bring in pallets of water for and real for what, real what's in their water uh lead arsenic and something else so you could filter it in theory i think you could filter it i'm not 100 percent sure oh. I, I, it's it's bad enough that the, it's a bad enough that when they really when the crisis really was being pointed out that the national guard was called in and the national guard was giving out water but again that's a short-term solution to a long-term problem the Flint, Michigan is doing nothing to fix its water. So there's a point, there There really is a point where you have to pull your Walmarts out because the people in the neighborhoods are not willing to do anything to fix their own problems. So Walmart is pulling out of several Oh, places. geez, Chicago, yeah. Seattle, every, <clears throat> again, once again, everywhere where you have allowed Democrats to socially destroy the infrastructure of your cities. Have you period. seen, have you seen these, uh, bunch of high level management had a meeting for Amazon mm-hmm. and they're talking about how um, within six years Amazon probably won't exist just like you know Jimco and Fedco and Kmarts are gone we need to we need to plan for this they're talking immediately laying off 20 percent of jobs but why why would Amazon disappear just change of times they're um, they're reinvesting they're pulling a lot of money out of the company apparently and they're putting it into real estate investment trusts so what they're basically doing is they're taking these facilities they've been building, uh, these big fulfillment centers, right. and they've shut all of that down. <clears throat> and they're redoing them, and they're turning them into micro-housing. Okay. 100% doesn't make any sense. Because cool. it, 100% doesn't make any sense unless the federal government is telling you that you are not going to be able to do 
internet commerce anymore because we're not going we're not going away from internet commerce. They we're going heavier in the pink on internet so, commerce. So they said the same we're thing. We're going all the way to the root. Walmart has kind of done uh, had similar meetings, and they're saying people are their profits are down, right? And they're you you keep hearing because of theft in these areas, and Walmart's closing these places down. But the profits are down, right? And what they said is the economy. The pe- our customers don't have money to buy things they want. They're only buying things they need. So when they come in, the spending of $600 in the store or $500 in the store, they're only spending on one side of the store, right? They're not buying the televisions and the bullshit anymore. They're buying only food things and things, staples, you know, things they have to have. And they're, they're like luxury food items. Those are being reduced, and they're buying more like commodity goods. Well, I think that's a that's a direct reflection of COVID. It has nothing to do with it has <coughs> nothing to do with how people are spending their money. Well, I think it has to do with economy, like your dollar. Well, Amanda, for instance, Amanda goes to the grocery store and shops on Tuesday, right? She cooks here twice a week. Jeremy cooks three times a week, and she would come back with you know five hundred dollars worth of shit. Now that was groceries and stuff and things for the business, and you know scissors and stuff she comes back now with 500 and 500 bucks used to fill up the back of the forerunner she comes back now with 500 bucks and there's two bins like i'm like how much was this 500 bucks i'm like where's the rest of it like it really is that way well i mean i i feel like we're catching up the the problem is we're catching up um during covid you had federal and state agencies that were giving people free money to sit at home and so what happened was People bought all those luxury items during COVID. They bought TVs. I mean, you didn't have to pay rent in California, so why wouldn't you buy a TV? Why wouldn't you buy a car you can't afford? Why wouldn't you? And that's all these things are coming to roost. The the I'll use the, the term the middle class. It's not really the middle class, but they don't need a TV because they already bought three TVs during COVID. Sure. They don't need a new car because they already bought a car they can't afford during COVID. So what's happening is all this stuff is coming to roost. Yes, there is inflation. That is that is seriously happening. But again, it's all these things coming back. And what I'm saying is people are going to start buying shit again. It's just the way we are. We are fucking retarded, and we buy way too much stuff. I mean... I hadn't stopped buying guns. I think you have a, I think you have a generation of people that have never gone to work, right? Well, yeah, it, it is it is a problem. They they talk about how many how many people in the workforce have uh, how many people that came of age to work who have never had to go into work. Yeah. So it is it's going to be a problem. But again, we'll have you know just like every other time in history we. We were, we were fat and happy, and we're going to have a period where people are going to suffer a little bit. It's going to be like the 1970s again. I was watching a conversation yesterday on the local Facebook group. And a dude said, hey, I have a job. We're hiring. If you want to show up and actually work and show up every day that you're scheduled, I have a job. Hit me up. People are like, what's the job? He's like, it's a fast food job. Hit me up. I will give you all the information. I'm looking. We're hiring two people. And people are like, well, I'm not working for under twenty dollars an hour. And when you, so I'm curious, right? What are they doing that's making them twenty or more an hour? Well, they're not fucking doing anything. None of the people commenting. They're they're kids that are friends with some of the kids right. we've had worked here. So I know that they're twenty one, perhaps, right? And they don't have anything about employment. They don't have anything that they're they're literally living at mom's house, and they they've got this living wage term, right? This is the you have to pay me a living wage. And some of the conversation was, well, Costco starts their people at, at twenty dollars an hour, so I don't know how these fast food places. Well, you're not in fucking Nashville. This isn't Costco. Yeah, and you don't you don't want a twenty five dollar McDonald's cheeseburger. <clears throat> this is not Costco. And what these people don't realize, right? They've been they've been programmed with this term of living wage. That job doesn't exist here, right? You have to leave here to have that job. And when you leave here, there is not $800 a month rent. There is $2,000. So they don't, they don't understand the economics it's also, of it. It's also the lie that the left tells you. That living wage is a lie. You do not go to McDonald's to make a living wage. Correct. That's a you, be, that's a, that is a beginner job. Yes. That's where you get your job experience. Now, 
all props to McDonald's. Like the reality is all props to McDonald's. You get in there and work those, you get in there and work those fries. If you want to own a McDonald's in 10, 15 years, you can do it. And McDonald's will help you do that. But if you're a lazy piece of shit who doesn't have any ambition in life and you think that they should pay you a living wage for a French fries, you're a turd. Just plain and simple. You're a turd. No one, no one that works the line in a McDonald's should be making $20 an hour. It's just, that's not the type of job it is. Right. These are the same people that if you read their threads, mm-hmm. are complaining that the dollar menu is not a dollar anymore as well. Right, right. It's, and, and all of them look like their name should be Moonchild. And I mean, they're, they're literally, you know, they're, they're fucking blue hair. They're green hairs. They're fucking. Brandall knows her. Maybe. They're, 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 they're using Kool-Aid to dye their hair with, right? Yeah. And they've got coexist on the back of all their cars. Well, it's, it's, it's this, this, here's the, here's the reality that most people won't look at. And it, it's, it's our fault. Our generation's fault is the parent or the, the children of the eighties and nineties or the parents of kids today. And what we did is we created generational wealth. So we created generational wealth. Yes. And because we created that generational wealth and we wanted our children to have a little better than we had in the 80s, even though, promise you, 80s and 90s, there will never be a better time than that ever. Um, we've allowed our children to sleep on the couch. We've allowed our children to live in the basement. We've paid for their college. We've paid for their car. We have created spoiled brats that are going to have a real hard time adjusting to the real world. And maybe, you know, the reality is, Maybe the economy does need to collapse. Maybe we maybe the dollar needs to tank. So these this next generation can learn what it means to fucking, you know, right, save reset. your tinfoil every reset. time you use it. Yeah, these are the same people. I mean, this is if you have a draft, these are the people that will be drafted. Well, they'll I mean, the, the truth of the matter is war has a way war has a way of uh toughening, hardening, weeding out. Weeding out it has a it has a good it has a good way of weeding out cuz what most people don't most people don't know and the truth of the matter i say that a lot don't i um even during world war 2 you know if you if you do some real research and when you know like louisiana's talking about we turned out uh one liberty ship every 24 hours it was a great feat it was a great feat, but don't think that everybody down there was happy and excited sure. and doing imagine, well. Imagine. They they had a lot of problems that they had to deal with. But the difference is when when stuff goes south, okay, I, I know everybody thinks I know everybody's out there and they're like, Oh, Joe Biden loves us. He's gonna he takes care of the LGBTQ and uh, I know everybody thinks that, but I'm I promise you, when stuff goes south, for example, if like the Chinese want, there's an accident in the South China Sea, and we go to war with China. All that love and happiness and kissy kiss that the government is doing with you, they're going to put their boot right on your neck. They they don't care. This is all. All of this is fake. It's just fake. They don't care. They will put their boot on your neck. They will put a uniform on you, and they will launch your ass against the Chinese. You know, in World War One, in one day. In one day, the British lost 23,000 troops. One day. Killed. Not just wounded. Killed. That's, a, that, that's just unbelievable. Who killed them? Germans. In one day. That's just one day. That's just one day fighting in World War I. Is that bullets, bombs, gas? Everything. That's just everything. Uh do you think that do you think that government do you think the British government cared whether those guys were gay, happy, straight, <clears throat> trans, white, black, Mexican, Asian? They didn't give two shits about any of those guys. They were cannon fodder. And your government will do the same thing to you. Absolutely. And, and you're not even you know, we're not even paying attention to the big picture. I mean, we are so close to World War Three, and everybody's running around worried about a living wage or and the ones that the ones that get what out bathroom of, I can use the ones that get out of that draft. You're not. You're just not going to fight the war. You're still going to be drafted into service. Like they don't realize 
what do you think they're building all these fucking camps for? You're going to be manufacturing something. You're going to be working coal mines. There's going to be something and, that you're going to do. You're not going to fucking sit home and play video games. And relative, the, relative, I would say that being in the being in the military, outside of the the threat of death, um, would probably be better than working in some of these places. You you think you think those coal mines, you think those coal mines in West Virginia are going to be closed if we go to war with China? Nope. All you, all you Greenpeace huggers with your uh, solar panels on your roof, you think uh, you think we're going to stop piping fuel from Alaska? Nope. Your trains hey, will gonna, stop derailing. We're gonna we're gonna speed all that up. All that is going to get all that's going to happen even at an exponential rate because the Chinese can already do it. I mean, here's an example. I'll just give you an example. We are currently fighting a proxy war in Ukraine. All of NATO. So I want you to think about this. Did you see that Vladimir Putin fucking flew into Ukraine yeah. yesterday? He, he he did that just because Joe Biden did it. But at least at least Vlad flew. Joe can only take a train because he falls down the stairs on the planes. But all of NATO. So the free world is supporting Ukraine. The United States is supporting Ukraine. The Ukrainians can only shoot 6,000 artillery shells a day. The Russians are doing 20,000 shells. It's it's not it's a non-compete. You you can't compete with that. We we sent them eight HIMARS. We everybody's like, "Oh, the HIMARS, the HIMARS, it's going to save the Ukrainians." They have eight. And it is believed that the Russians have already blown up three of them. There's some pictures of the uh, cities around oh the there's out, some yeah the, like there's nothing there it's yeah. literally it looks like somebody dropped it, it's like they air laid pallets of bricks that just exploded when they hit the ground like there is fucking nothing what there. i think i think the reality is what happened was uh putin believed putin believed that he was going to have the same success that we had in like the initial iraq war meaning shock and awe shock and awe you drive you drive to the capital you take kiev everybody'd have a russian flag they'd be waving the flag you won the war. Unfortunately for Putin, Ukrainians are a lot tougher than he thought, and they are willing to uh, they are willing to go up against a far superior military in order to save their country. And so he got his he got his nose punched. Well, now they're fighting like Russians. They're not fighting like Americans anymore. They're fighting like Russians. They're using artillery and they're obliterating every inch they can. In order to gain that ground, because they don't Who care, the Who, Russians, Russia, because they don't care. They don't. They like the Russians could level. Uh, the Russians could level Kiev to the brick. They don't care. All they are trying to do is expand the border and create a buffer between NATO and the Soviet or Russia, right? So they don't. They don't, don't care they if it's that, a wasteland. And they need that deep water port. Yeah, they need the deep water port. Uh, but still, it's it's not about that because they already had it. They, Crimea gives them that deep water port. Do you think that the Russians get ice cream every day? This sounds kind of weird. I know I'm going somewhere with it. I believe they do get ice cream every day. Where do you think it comes from? The ice cream place? Do you know that the United States had three ice cream ships? Do you know about the U.S. Navy's ice cream ships during uh, World War II? No, but I I would it wouldn't surprise me one bit if we had ice cream ships. You no bullshit. You no, bet. it wouldn't surprise me one bit. So they made these concrete barges and they, they didn't work for whatever the application was, right? They converted these so they weren't really ships, they were like ship trailers. So they put ice cream factories. They had all this ice cream and it comes from also when we had all the cheese, right? When right. Ronald Reagan inherited this whole problem that there was four billion pounds of fucking cheese sitting in these caves. So he's like, okay, we're gonna give it to we're gonna give it to fucking poor people, right? That's where government cheese came from. So they were subsidizing all these dairy farmers. So they were taking the dairy farmers, and they were they they ended up making ice cream, right? So they make all this ice cream, and it it was thought that it was super demoralizing that the frontline troops who were fighting are out there starving to death, and our troops are actually eating ice cream. We used to take cream and we'd put it in like the the bubble uh, gun on mm -hmm. like the B-24 or whatever that bomber was. And they would put cream in there because it got cold enough at altitude and it would jostle it around enough that with cream and sugar, when they landed, they oh, would yeah, have, they if would they made cream. it back, they would have ice cream and ice they would cream. celebrate with ice cream. There's a, there's a channel called 
the fat electrician or something like that. It just uh, you off the wall, just a weird name for the channel. I'm sure it started as something else, but he does badass like 10 minute videos. And this is one of the videos he did. He also did one on when we blew up the whale and, uh, this the, like yeah. they used, they, it was a 16,000 pound whale and they used 1000 pounds of TNT yeah, and, blew that whale and they blew the whale up. Well, a quarter mile away, the blubber was landing and like crushing fucking cars and shit in parking lots and stuff. But he, he has uh, uh or bats, right? We were going to release these bats because yep. most of Japan was made of paper and wood. And then uh, it, they came back and burned some of our shit down, yeah. right? <laughs> and then uh, dogs, right? So the, the Russians were training dogs and they put these bomb vests on dogs yep. and they had a lever. Well, the dog would run. They associated the tank with people who would give them treats. Well, the dog would run and, and it, as he'd come up to the tank or get under the tank, beside it or whatever, it would hit this lever and it would blow up. Well, what they didn't take into account is that the Russians were running diesel and the dog's sense of smell that's what it had actually programmed to was the diesel, whereas the enemy tanks, the German tanks, I believe, were running gasoline, right? So when they send the dogs out, the dogs went to the fucking Russian tanks because that's what they were trained for, and they were they blowing would, up their own shit. Yeah, they would come They would come back. Yeah, and then we that's also— the last thing you want is a bomb. We had rats also. We had these rats. We were taking all these dead rats, and we were putting uh, explosives in the rats. And what we were trying to do was plant dead rats around infrastructure factories so that— um, like janitors would find these things and because it was associated with prior it was, it was ingrained in them that rats carried the plague from the fleas they would take these rats and put them in the boilers right and incinerate them hoping this was a huge like it was yeah. a it was prior to cia or whatever right and then and that's where the term i don't give a rat's ass came from that's what he, he and he's like i totally just made that up but the youtube channel is very good it's called like the fat electrician or something you'd be uh You'd be amazed, it, it, like if you want to go down a, a rabbit hole when you're talking about the military and ice cream, you would be amazed at how how hard, how hard they try to push things like ice cream and, you know, cakes and things forward to as far forward as they possibly could. I mean, even... Even when, uh, like, booster. there was a point, there was a point where, um, well, I was, we were probably the, we were probably the furthest, the furthest American unit in Iraq at the time. And all we ate was MREs and T-Rats. And they made sure that the, that we got, there was like a lemon cake T-Rat. There was like a chocolate chip something T-Rat. And, uh, and even... Those are the trays. The trays. Tray rats. We replaced. We replaced the army. Okay, so the army was there first, and so the army's like, "Yeah, we got this cool ass trailer where we heat up our tea rats and everything, and and we make sure that every day there's fruit." So when we fell in on that, and the, we were doing the tra- the the changeover with the army, and uh, <laughs> and you'd get in there and you'd be like, "Oh my god, is that a banana?" And you get the banana and you eat the banana and shit, and you be so like fresh fruit, fresh fruit, right? And then immediately, because again, it's the Marine Corps. Immediately, the our our guys are like, "Hey, um, we don't have cooks in the Marine Corps anymore. Not real cooks. Nobody knows how to operate this thing." And so the Army guys had to teach Marines how to run this, you know, run the tray thing, even though it's just boiling water and shit. But they had to teach them how to use it. And so they teach them, and then they leave. No more fresh fruit for six months. <laughs> Didn't you buy? Don't you own one of those kitchen trailers? I do not. I, I've I've looked at them. I've I've thought about getting them. one. Yeah, bears, of, bears got one. It's pretty I, neat. I thought about getting one. Just it's hard. It, it's it's easy to find the trailer stripped. It's hard to find a trailer With for a reasonable price that has everything shit. you want. You want all this. If you're going to get that trailer, you want all the cook stuff so you can. Do you see that tent I sent you the other day? There's a dude here local has a tent. It's yeah. a it's a mess tent, and he's like, "Hey, I'm partners with this dude. I'll take fuck if I'll I'll give it to you for three hundred bucks. I don't even want my half of the money out of it. I sent it to you to see oh. your reaction. I didn't if even. You I'm said, gonna have to look at it. If again. you just said buy it, I'll buy it. We'll get I'd it. I'd have to look at it. We'll just put it in the parking lot. Yeah, we'll it'd just, be great for serving chow to all the uh, all the people who come. We're gonna we re- shoot some slop. I'm gonna watch some mash. 
Mm -hmm. and we're going to look at the aerial view, and we're going to set up the whole camp here. Oh, that would be cool. Yeah, we should we should set up the camp. I want one of those buy one of those bubble helicopters, bubble helicopters and shit to fly in. <laughs> yeah, Brandel's got it. The only way you can ride in it, Brandel, is if you lay on the stretcher. You got to lay on the stretcher because those helicopters are like I think they can only you, three three people. <laughs> They, they're they're pretty rough yeah and i don't think you're getting three and one of them's outside if you got three yeah. in that mother well that's what i'm saying two two stretch i think i think that if you have both stretchers loaded so if you have two wounded guys so those those stretchers are on the struts i think you can only have the pilot i don't think you can have is a passenger there even too. A second seat in there? there is a second seat you can't have two people like when the when the sheriff's department down in Santee was flying around, Astria. they would have a they would have a co pilot. My there. uncle flew that helicopter. But I don't. But, but I think if you have two, I think if you have two guys on the skids, helicopter pilots, you can let me know if I'm wrong. But I I believe if there are two dudes on the skids, two wounded personnel, that they can only have a pilot. They can't have a third. I mean, relative safe. You're not supposed to fly external on a Cobra helicopter yet. People do it, but relative safe. Uh, I think you're only allowed three, three see people. Tac, uh, Green Line Tactical's coming in to do a class at TAC Response. What is Green Line Tactical? Night Vision Company. Oh, oh, that'd be cool. But they're coming in with a, they're bringing a little bird. Oh, that's cool. So aerial platform shooting is what the mm. class is. That's cool. Uh, night, uh, MVGs are over, guys. T tell them. If you don't have thermals, you're not even in the, you're not even in the game anymore. What if you have one? night vision tube and one thermal tube uh you can do that it's just hard to pair it's just hard to pair them and make it work right it's just, very it's very hard to pair them i just download a usb it in and just reprogram reprogram your eye it's very hard to pair them but if you can get them paired it's it's not a bad way to go but again if you spend the money how much you don't need to pair them. how much is the money <laughs> uh the reality is if you want to if you want to get in the fight you're talking 10 grand for and that's not that's just the night vision. You're talking ten grand for the thermal. For for that's a, not your helmet. That's not your fucking yeah. For a Wilcox total mounts. For a for a total thing, total package. You're, you're spending some serious money. Uh, can you get away with night vision? Yeah, you can get away with night vision. But again, this is America. The problem is the problem is we live in America. Yeah, who are you gearing up to fight? <laughs> the problem is we live in America, and because we live in America, your peer adversary, the person that you are. Like, you're going against somebody who has a thermal, and he's going to laugh as he's watching you cross that open danger area with your night vision on, and you think you can see everything while he's tracking you with his rifle, no problem with the thermal device. Not to mention, they're they're getting fucking heads-up display shit piped in yeah. from their fucking drone support. I mean, the, 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 the thing about the difference between night vision and, and thermal, let's just say this, is... <laughs> tactically you can still hide from night vision so tactically you can still fight against an adversary a peer adversary that has night vision and it be somewhat equal uh if someone is using thermals and you are using a passive system like night vision mvgs you're toast you're you just toast you can't hide from them there's not there's not a we haven't created a a camouflage per se that works against modern thermals. Yes, if you buy an old FLIR that's 10 years old and it's like 23 by something. <laughs> that Raytheon one we had. You can't see. You can't. You It's not working very well. But the modern thermals, man, you can see color in those damn so things. So you can't hang a bed sheet up in front of you anymore? Not really. Corrugated cardboard? Corrugated. That stuff just kind of doesn't work anymore because it, it – the detection levels are so good that it can tell the different heat. So even so, like when they used to use the cardboard to hide behind them, the issue was the detection level wasn't so good. So the cardboard would be invisible if it was close to the same temperature as everything else. But now the detection level is so good that they'll just see a cardboard square because it will not be the exact temperature as the ambient air. We had to turn ours on and let it sit for five minutes while, yeah, it, the older, while it refrigerated. The older versions uh, needed a basically a warm up time. They always called it a cryo chip. I don't know yeah, what was in there. The new the new stuff doesn't the new stuff doesn't need that shit. It's it's one minute activation, if even that. So the new stuff doesn't need it. Shit the the 
the Dragon Night Tracker, it had to have a cooling cartridge, and it was like, you fire that thing up. I mean, it was, again, it was badass. And that, what did that go on? That, uh, the, uh, it, was on, it was the Dragon Missile. Got it, okay. That, that we had in the 90s. Is the missile, is the launcher disposable? The la- the tube is disposable. But the tracker would hook the, onto the yeah, but that thermal. I mean, uh, it was, you know, that big, sat on top of the missile. But we w- <coughs> we did an op where we were down in San Diego, and what were we six miles from the? And this is in the nineties. We were six miles from the Mexican border, and we could we could see them lining up just using the night the the tracker but that thing needed a cooling cartridge a battery and it was like you you kicked it on and it was just like ghostbusters as soon as you turn it on it was like because it had to cool it had to keep itself cool <coughs> so it was loud as fuck but they're not like that now the technology that the dragon night tracker had is this big now you know it's tinky uh, so if you don't have and I and I am not a representative of a thermal company in no way, shape, or form, but the reality is, what thermals would you look at? <coughs> uh, Cost-wise, if you don't, if you're not trying to sneak into the military application side of the house, um, Pulsar. Pulsar is. They are the guys that are making usable thermal devices for regular people, and do, the do price look, ranges do are. Do you look good. through it, or is it a camera and a monitor? It's a, the, uh, so with the Pulsars. It's a scope. It's just a regular scope you put on your rifle. Just so it's not head mounted. Yeah, it's not head mounted. Uh, they do have. I do believe that Pulsar has a couple of head mounted ones. What they is, have some, but what does a unit like that cost? Well, top of the line, uh, top of the line Pulsar right now, I think is running at like fifty two. Um, Could you use it in your hand? They have hand. They have hand versions, right? So, uh, and those are cheaper. Right. They also have clip-ons. You can get a clip-on. So if you want to use your existing optic instead of using one of their scopes, uh, you could get a clip-on. So it clips onto your in front of your uh, regular day optic. Uh, but for regular people, Pulsar is probably the way to go. Um, I you just want to use it when I mow the grass in the dark. I mean, it would look cool because everybody would be like, I hear that. What's going on out there? As the chicken goes out the side of the lawnmower. Chicken sleep at night. <laughs> Quick question. Answer. With drone technology now, yes. does it even matter what you have? With uh, the drone technology... Drone technology I mean, now. Like well, who's your adversary, right? Drones? Are you trying to sneak in into the world? You're trying to sneak past a farmer? Or are we trying to sneak past National Guard? Like, Drones? are we trying to sneak past like- the Chinese have occupied... But drone technology is going to use a thermal. They have it right now. Your your DJI Mavic Pro 3, like I've got twos in there. The threes have thermals on them. Guys are using them to check um, temperature on like package units on top of roofs for but leakages the, and stuff. The thermal, like for example, if you're, let's say your adversary is going to use a DJI against you, okay? The thermal will allow you to quickly detect where that threat is and with a, with certain pieces of equipment will allow you to either neutralize that threat or actually shoot it down whereas now there's a lot of anti-drone technology yeah. whereas now it, let's say if you're using mvgs right if you're using mvgs and that drone is up there you're going to be doing this. You're going to be trying to find where the, even like daylight, right? You hear the drone, you're looking all over the sky to try and figure out where this damn I thing is. I spend more at. time trying to identify my drone so that I can get the right. shot I want, you know? Um, and I'll see it one second and then I'll talk to somebody next to me. Take, and then I'm like, where is that fucking Whereas thing? Whereas with a, with, a, with a thermal system, it makes it easier for you to identify where that, where that drone is at specifically right and that's day or night for for whatever reason for whatever reason a lot of even the military we have this kind of aversion to use thermals during the day because it's day i i think it really has to do with our eyesight meaning um we feel like we can see we can see better with just looking through our eyes but the thermal works just as good during the day um so drone technology is good but it's not 
it's not a be all like example. The Russians, the, you know, if you take a look at Ukraine, Ukraine is one of the places in the world right now where drones are being used off the chart, right? They're just the Ukrainians have uh, figured out ways to drop 60 millimeter mortars and all kinds of shit. They were doing it prior. They've been doing it to Israel for years. They've been dropping it on Israelis. And they've been doing it in Mexico, too. You see it a lot in Mexico. So, but <coughs> this, this war is is like the next evolution in drone warfare as far as small, personal, lightweight drones that regular people can use. You know, when we went into Iraq, it was Raptors. Well, those are just drones, right? They're just, that's all they are. The drones that can fire a tow missile. Um, it still did not change. It doesn't really change the battlefield, right? It and a lot of your municipalities, they've, they've had drones for years, right, with FLIR on them? It changes the metric a little bit as far as what you have to do to keep from getting hit by a drone. But it's no different. Uh, you know, the reality is a drone is no different than a missile, a bomb. Uh, it's just you get detected, and they use this weapon against you. And that's the key right now is, like, they talk about the Russians uh, putting T-55 tanks on the battlefield. Problem with a T-55 is it has no thermal or night vision capability. And so because it doesn't have that, and the tanks that the tanks that in theory we're giving the Ukrainians all have night vision and thermal, that T-55 is toast. It can't do anything. Why don't they just get some of those new uh, fan-fangled Chinese tanks? Well, here's the, 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 the truth that the Department of Defense doesn't want you to know and our government doesn't want you to know is the Chinese don't want to help the Russians at all. They're trickling. Like the Chinese are like, just like, just like us. They like, they're like, we're going to send Abrams. Well, then where are your fucking Abrams at? Right. How long does it fucking take? I I see them on trains here all the time. Put that motherfucker on a show. I I happen to know. Well, they can move people around the world in fucking, you know, under a day. The reality is (laughs) the reality that most people aren't talking about either is there are, there is a, Division plus a division plus of M1 Abram tanks in fucking Germany yep. right now. So if they if if Joe Biden was serious, like if they, if we were serious, they could cut a hundred tanks out of that division and be like, Ukraine, they'll be here tomorrow. Put them on trains. Yeah, they just put them on trains. How long would it take to get them there? Twenty four hours. Easy. Under under probably. M- maybe maybe under. I don't know the I don't know the because they would go from Germany to Poland and then Poland to Ukraine, Our, but the reality is we're not we're we're trickling we're doing the same thing we're doing the same thing that China we're giving the we're giving the Ukrainians just enough to keep this thing going but not enough for them to fucking win decisively. Do we um? How do we tie a tank down? It was chains and binders. Yeah, chains and binders. There's a there's a really good YouTube video it, of them putting. M1 Abrams on uh, on trains and how they have to do it. And I and I thought to myself as I was watching that video, I'm like, oh, my God, I'm glad I'm not in the Army and I've never had to do that because that seems like a very tedious bullshit thing because they use a lot of chains. Is the tank not heavy enough? It'll just stay there? Interesting question, but it sits a f- – I, I think it's more has to do with the fact – well – no, because it's in because you're it's weight in motion, right? So the heavier the okay. object is, has there ever been a? Because I I saw somebody the other day so there's 72 train derailments a day, right? Maybe if you you don't hear about them because there's not they don't explode and stuff. Most of them are insignificant. If a tank is if the t- train carrying the tanks derail, is it strapped down well enough that the tank stays on the on the cart, cart probably even though it's turned over probably. If it turned, the interesting thing about a tank that a lot of people don't know is if a, if a tank turns over, the turret falls out. Yeah, it just sits on there. Yeah, it's, it's just, just gravity holding the turret. Yeah, because we saw those when they were um, that's why rocket striking them from planes, missiles, and shit, and the t- the turrets pop. That's off. why the turrets pop off every time they blow up a Russian tank because they're they're just sitting there. But anyways, get thermals. Forget about night vision. If you if you have a, if you have a choice right now, if you're like ooh dual quad ninja night vision or a thermal get a thermal what if you can't afford a thermal save your money you're not doing yourself any good uh, the reality is you're not doing i and i say this i say this from the perspective of i have all the stupid night vision um 
you're not doing yourself a favor if you're regressing in your technology. I agree with you. However, two grand, you can get an AMP VS14. <clears throat> so if, right. we were, if we were going to do... Two grand. If we were going to do nighttime security mm -hmm. here, for instance, right? Nighttime security. We're going to put somebody up on high ground, okay. whatever high point is. Mm -hmm. And we're going to look... We're going to scan 180 this way, and another dude's going to look 180 that mm -hmm. way. You're going to see anybody coming through with night vision, coming near the property. True. Thermal would be better. True. But if here's the thing. Here's the, here's the reality of that scenario. The reality of that scenario is if, if somebody has cheap thermals. So if you go, if you go back to that, the, what was that thing we used to have? The 250... Talking about the Raytheon one? Raytheon. If someone has cheap thermals. That wasn't cheap then. That no, I mean, relative now, right? I think I think those Raytheons now are like 1200 bucks. Really? Yeah, I think you can get them for like 1200 bucks now. They were, they were like $60 I've actually, grand then. I've actually was like, hmm. maybe I, I should buy one of these. But I've, I have a small scout FLIR, a small scout FLIR that has the same technology that those Raytheons had in it. And... It's the size of like a laser. Yeah, it's a there. little guy. So <laughs> the problem again is if you put, if you put, let's we'll just say PVS fourteens. <clears throat> if you put four thousand dollars into two guys with night vision, okay, and then I got a twelve hundred dollar Raytheon thermal. You're gonna see the two guys. I'm gonna see visions. the two guys. They're not gonna see me, and that that makes them completely useless. What if you set your hide side up and you put like a thermal blanket in front of it that won't mask them somewhat? Well, the only thing that the only thing that can defeat thermal from seeing is glass. So it's it. For example, if I'm looking at if I'm looking at uh, a window, I can't tell if somebody's in there, and that's old technology. I'm sure there is something now that the the ninjas. That the guys over at Dev Group are using that sees through walls and all kinds of shit, but what I'm saying is something that you could buy right now, the glass stops. So again, if you had two glass capsules up there with two guys standing it with night vision, they can or they windows can, in the in the eve of the yeah windows or something like that, they're not gonna and just have them have your your shooter offset on a table looking. The thermal's through. not going to be able to see through that glass. Got it. But uh, I mean. Thermal's the way to go. So I'm I'm thinking like civil unrest, the cities are on fire. I'm not <sighs> worried about government, you know, coming in after I'm I'm thinking crackheads, targets of oppor you know, criminals of opportunity, shit like that. Okay. I'm just again, the yes. problem is the problem is this is America and the proliferation of those types of devices. I think you're are so when we get to that point, you're going to be able to pick those devices up. Maybe, maybe. I'm just again, if you if you're peer if you're if you're thinking about in your scenario, MVGs are fine, right? If in your scenario, civil unrest, MVGs are fine. But at what level is civil unrest? If the National Guard decides that no one can live outside of the city limits, and they want to police everybody up. Um, now you're talking about a peer adversary that is going to be using thermals. Now, but you've said over and over thousands of times that that could never happen. I'm not saying it couldn't happen. Anything is they don't possible. Have the manpower. We, we rounded up again. They don't have the manpower for. They don't. We do not. The United States, with all its service members, does does not have the manpower to tactically protect major metropolitan cities if we go if we go civil war now if it's a localized problem so for example let's say let's say the the state of tennessee says fuck it we're going to secede from the union fuck you guys putting up roadblocks on all the interstates you can't come here no more they have enough troops to occupy tennessee and create problems now it's going to be a it's going to be a mess it's going to be a nightmare there's going to be, you, you're not going to want to be the National Guard troop or the, because truth of the matter is, if we secede, the National Guard units now belong to us. They would get absorbed. Um, but you're not going to want to be the, you know, 
Marines from Camp Pendleton that come to Tennessee to try and put out the fire because you're going to get hurt. Like, you're going to get hurt. Because, again, the proliferation of things within this, the proliferation of things that are available to people, especially in this state, is almost peer, is, is I say almost peer, with what they're going to have. I feel like that if that day came, they would unloose their assets. I mean, they're going to use. Like, Not initially. Like, like you're going to be fighting not initially Cobras and Apaches and but again not initially initially what they're going to do is try and quell whatever it is with the minimal amount of force as possible okay they're going to initially they're going to they're not going to Tennessee's not going to secede and then they're going to deploy F22 Raptor and blow up the Capitol building no they'll send the fucking, because they'll send predators in and, and bomb you in the middle of the night and be like oh gas explosion maybe maybe but again i want you to think about this we did that for 20 years in Afghanistan. We did that for 20 years in Iraq. And we have gotten nowhere with any of that. And we use the full force of the U.S. military. The problem is our leadership. <laughs> the leadership we have are so fucking inept and so unable to fight war anymore that it's a losing battle for, for the U.S. military to fucking go anywhere Today, right now, with the current leadership, with the current leadership we've had for the last 10 years, you're wasting your time. You're wasting your, unless we're going into like, we're going to go into Haiti. We're going to overthrow the government of Haiti. That's a, that's an in out. Like Grenada. Yeah, that's an in out, unless we're going into Haiti. But if you're talking about a major conflict where you have to go in and quell a populace in a state, they're going to lose. They're just going to lose. They, the, the leadership does not have the capability to fight war anymore. It will get to a point where it will get, it would get to a point. I believe it would totally get to a point where you would have a general officer without any hesitation talking about dropping a nuclear weapon within the confines of the United States. And the truth of the matter is if a state wants to secede that bad, that you have a general officer talking about dropping a nuclear weapon He's the problem, not the state. He's the problem. And that and that's the leadership we have. They are fucking weak. A good president, if Joe Biden was a good president, every single star, every single star officer, four star down to one star, all of them. When he became president, he should have fired every one of them. Should have fired every single one of them. He should have said, "Hey, you guys are going for early retirement." Because you have lied for the past 20 years about what's been going on in fucking Afghanistan and Iraq. Propaganda or what? They have lied. And because they lied, we had the fiasco of leaving all that equipment over there. They should all be fired. They shouldn't have been, they shouldn't have been promoted. Um, Miley is the fucking worst, worst general that we have. Pro I mean. How responsible for that is Joe Biden? I'm mean, obviously he made no decision. He just was told by his handlers, "Hey, we're doing this." Is as far as the the pullout in Afghanistan? Yeah. Did you see Al Qaeda? <laughs> so Joe Biden came out. Okay, so you, you know about the the black kid went to the wrong house yesterday, day before. A couple. It's actually it's been four days ago. Black kid, I uh, believe, oh, shot through the door. Has a twin brother. Goes to the wrong door. Eighty four year old white guy fucking lights him up. Puts five shoots him in the head three four times. Shoots him through the door though. So maybe he shoots him through the door because there's the original posting said that he entered the house and was shot in the house that has now disappeared. And now it says that he has shot him through the door. They did not arrest him. Then they go back and they arrest him with two charges, whatever. Um, Cause Joe Biden said, shoot him. through so the door. So Joe Biden, Joe Biden has called makes this press conference i called him spoke to him invited him and his family out to the to the white house he's gonna come and you know kumbaya over here um they've raised three and a half million dollars through gofundme um simultaneously or a couple of days later uh a white lady who knows fucking crackheads i don't know what they look like turns around in this dude's driveway turns out he's a, a black dude he fucking shoots out of the house, shoots and kills. Oh, they were young kids. I remember they were they were young kids because they had to drive five miles before they got any cell coverage. And then the ambulance showed up, worked on her CPR. The, the girl, they were like college kids, maybe 19, 18, 19 years old. And the girl died from the gunshot wound. You didn't hear any of that. When it was finally reported, no colors were mentioned, but on this other one. So they call him to the White House. 
and now he's on this whole thing of uh, we got to get these weapons of mass destruction out of the hands of all these uh, people in the United States and blah, blah, blah. Al-Qaeda gets on there, the Al-Qaeda Twitter account, and is like, I just want you to know all the weapons you left here in Afghanistan are safe and we are controlling our weapons as the U.S. citizens should control their weapons. <laughs> Fucking yeah. nuts. Yeah. I mean, it, it, <clears throat> and who knows? I mean, maybe it's a screen AI generated or a meme. Who knows? But the guys reporting it, Ben Shapiro and them dudes are like, no, it's, it's that's real. Yeah. The reality, uh, the reality is, uh, with, with Joe Biden is, I mean, we, we let's, we'll talk about it. The, the withdrawal in Afghanistan. There is a video of Joe Biden before the election talking he's doing a one of those like he's in a restaurant or something he's talking to people and somebody mentions afghanistan and he says he says joe biden says come on man no he says understand if i gave the order as president of the united states to pull out of afghanistan it would take us a year to even be ready to pull out of afghanistan it would probably take seven years to get all the equipment out he goes, we cannot just pull out of Afghanistan. Now, let's fast forward to the pull out of Afghanistan. Joe has already lost his mental cognitivity. He he already he's already suffering from dementia and dementia and Alzheimer. His staff is the one that said pull out of Afghanistan. And because the truth of the matter is, because Joe Biden or because the left continually puts people in positions they are not qualified for, from the Surgeon General to Who's the surgeon general? Oh my yeah. God! Oh yeah, continually. That's, that's not the sur- that's the surgeon general. That's the surgeon general. Continually. Did you see the pictures of her when he when she was he? Did you see the pictures? Like, I, there's I some. There's all kinds yeah. of photos of that person. Um, continually put promote people into positions they are not qualified for, um, and they, this goes for the Republican Party too. The reality is, if the administrator of the FFA doesn't know anything about airplanes, he shouldn't be in charge of the fucking FAA. Did you see that uh, Southwestern uh, grounded has uh, the FAA came out and grounded all Southwestern aircraft because they're not up to inspection, and they've been having all kinds of problems. They grounded this morning 800 flights with no. All the planes have to be inspected at this point. So they're, according to the post I saw out of business right now maybe but maybe that's the plan right maybe Dude, only rich people are supposed to be able to fly that's why john Kerry has two fucking private planes because he doesn't he cares so much about the taylor environment swift, taylor swift was making some whole uh we need to we need to fly less and you need to do your part uh that bitch's plane flew i think it, it was 30 days in a month her plane flew 45 I mean, 45 times last month let's just be clear Forget about the airplane, Taylor. Let's just forget about the airplane. You can have your airplane. Because I bet you money that every single one of your concerts has a bigger carbon footprint than your fucking airplane. So stop doing concerts. Don't do any more concerts. And you are going to be doing your part. The issue here, Taylor, is... You only want other people to do their part. You don't give a shit well, that's about all, the environment. Yeah, that's all of them. That's and that's what yeah, they, that's all of them. If they have money, they don't. You know, look at look at Davos. When you see that, yeah, look at the aerial view of Davos and how many fucking aircraft are there. It's just it, it's it, you are the reason why we have the problem in the first place. So stop doing music. Uh, sell all your houses. Move into a a small house, and start growing your own vegetables. Think about how much how much of a carbon neutral person you would be if you did that. You would probably save the planet single handedly because I know you do a lot of shows, a lot of plastic bottles, a lot of plastic cups, a lot of people drive into the show. I probably, mean, probably Budweiser. Yeah, probably Budweiser. So, so we're fuck building you, Taylor Swift. Me and Brandel are building a bunch of black A frames. Have you seen these little A frame houses? Uh, uh-uh. for chickens? No, they're beautiful. No, for oh. humans. Oh, humans. A little loft upside, cedar inside, really mm-hmm. nice. And we planted a bunch of plants yesterday. Cool. Just doing my part. That's good. Just doing my yeah, part. Yeah, I hate, I mean, I hate, I hate those people when they're just standing on their fucking pile of gold going, you peasants, eat the gruel. Eat the gruel. That's all Taylor Swift is telling you people. She's just standing that, on her pile she, of gold saying, eat the gruel. Doesn't she have a house here in, in Tennessee somewhere? Oh, I'm sure she does. She like can't Leaper's be, Fork or somewhere? She can't be country and not have a house here. Is she country? Is that what oh, she is? Oh, she started now? country. Do now you know Travis Barker? Bebop. 
You don't? I mean, I know who he is. I don't know. You don't know him? Yeah, but the tragedy in Afghanistan was single-handedly the leadership fault. So uh, your your current generals, to include Commandant of the Marine Corps, his ass should be fired. Aren't it, we back in Afghan? Like, don't we have people there? It, uh, if we do, if we have anybody in Afghanistan, it's going to be the uh, it's going to be the Secret Army of Northern Virginia. That's Not, what I'm. That's what I mean. If we do. Um, so talking about talking about we don't talking about peer adversaries right in the United States, what I wanted to say is, um, and then the unwillingness to fight right, and then you've got these young guys that they they would totally bomb you because you didn't have a Biden sign in your front yard right these young right. these young kids, there are a lot of men who have been in combat. Oh yeah, like we're talking Tennessee. How many like and I don't know the number. I don't need to know the number, but there's a lot of fucking guys who have been in combat who reside near in and around here as well as all of Tennessee and in Texas. I mean, look at the crew over there in Texas with Tim Kennedy and all those guys and that whole community they're setting up. Like you have dudes that have overthrown other countries all around there. And those guys know how to fight. What age do they become combat ineffective? They don't. They don't become combat. Because they don't have to combat. They, they just don't, have they to don't, they don't become, lines. see that it's the, it's the lie of the military, right? So the, the lie of the military is, and, and I don't want to say it's a lie because again, physical fitness and things like that matter. Um, but you did, you know, even the fittest, even the fittest dudes in the world, we got beat by a country that doesn't even know how to do jumping jacks. Um, it's specific military combat. So if I have to do specific military combat, if I am storming the beaches of Normandy, which, again, they didn't do, the more fit and more well-shaped, the more in shape your uh, your troops are, the further they can go, right? So they can go further. So if I have a if I have a battalion, if I have a battalion that lands at Normandy, I want them to go, I hope I want them to go all the way to Germany. And so the more in shape they are, the more fit, the further they can go. When you are conducting guerrilla operations, none of that matters anymore because I pick the time and place. So, you know, when somebody talks about, uh, when somebody talks about you should be doing pushups every day and all this shit, if you think you're going to fight the, you don't, you, you don't need to do any of that. You just have to pick the time and place. If you pick the time and place, then the, then the, then the forces that you're going against always have to be on the defense. And that's never a good thing. Now, the difference between Afghanistan and say Tennessee or say when you're talking about all these veterans that are on the streets. No, I'm not talking about on the streets. Well, I'm just saying veterans that are out, out the there service. out there in the real world, right? right? All the veterans that are out there in the real world who've been playing this game for 10 years. Is there well trained? There was no there was no well we didn't go up against we didn't go up against anybody who had any serious training in Afghanistan or Iraq, not even the Iraqis. They didn't have any good fucking training. We didn't go up against, we haven't gone up against a military force that trains in a manner that would make them lethal on the battlefield. And yet we seem to always be on the other end of the stick. The reality is it's because our military leaders since the end of world war two have not had the, not have the will to fight war the way it needs to be fought. It's not, we never had the capability. Like the reality is we've, we've always had the capability to, win every single conflict we've got in but we have weak leadership it's just worse now it's 10 times worse now um so it doesn't matter if you're 70 years old as long as you have cognitive function you still have the training and capability to use the weapon systems that are out there and that is a serious problem for any army no matter how well trained they are how equipped it is because i only have to be i only have to be on point one time your military, whatever it is, whether it's the fucking Chinese coming to America or North Koreans, they have to be on point all the time, every fucking minute. Because the minute they're not on point, I'm going to exploit that and I'm going to kill me some fucking North Korean soldiers. And then I'm going to go back home. I'm going to eat a bowl of fucking cereal. <laughs> I'm going to bury my, you know, I'm going to bury my fucking AK in the woods and hope that they didn't get some sort of video surveillance of me running around. But either way, that's you have a you have this 
huge, huge military military force within the United States that nobody even nobody even thinks about. And the type of training and level of training, because we, we, you know, the reality is we put these we put these kids out on the street every day. Every day we're taking trained killers and just like, hey, bro, go work at Walmart. And it, uh, from a just from a human a human perspective, I'm surprised that we don't have more problems with veterans than less problems. Do you think they're able to track those guys, or do you think they've no, lost? No. They've lost. Tabs yeah, they on. don't. They don't. I mean, the reality is they don't know where fucking Mike Glover is, and they they may, they they declared him a fucking terrorist, right? They don't have the you know the the thing about the FBI is outside of social media. So outside of you getting on your phone and on your computer, um, they don't have the they don't have the structure to be following around hundreds of thousands. Like the reality is, you're talking about. I promise you, they're following Mike around. Well, Mike, Mike probably has somebody in his organization. He got undercover. He got hit. He got hit as a terrorist and took it to the mat and is, I think is above it. And the FBI would have a, they would be hard pressed to say why they're following him around now. Um, the FBI got beat up this whole, this whole going after going after PTA moms has got the DOJ and the FBI beat up. That's why they're, that's why they're so, why they're all on TV talking about this guy who was selling secrets. Okay, we're going to talk about that in a second. Yeah. I got to pee. Oh, pee. What's your, what's, what's your take on the worst intelligence leak in history of the United States? I mean, 20, it's, 21 year old kid. It's not really the worst intelligence leak in the history of the United States. I mean, uh, Snowden oh. and what's the other guy's name? Uh, Assange. Assange letting you know that your government is watching and listening to everything you say. That's probably a worse intelligence leak. This is this is weird. The reason why why'd they send a whole fucking SWAT team, FBI SWAT team to pick because they wanted the photo op during the day. No, no, no. I, it, it's it's uh, at his mom's house. When we when we militarize the police, um, you have to constantly use that gear. Or it becomes one of those things where a bean counter is going to be like, well, why do we have a MRAP? You guys never use the motherfucker. So they need to get they need to get shots of themselves running around in full kit with their helmets on and all that in order to uh, ensure that they keep getting those funds for that kind of stuff. Um, and, you know, the reality is it's a dangerous world. They had no idea. I mean, you know, when you think about all the – crazy shit that's been going on in the United States. It's always some young kid anyways. They didn't have no idea that he wasn't going to be like, MRAP, bust out my M60 machine gun that I stole from the Air National Guard and just start going to town. So, I mean, from Does a police... The Air National Guard have M60s? I'll bet the Air National Guard still has them. Yeah. I mean, they they, they just refurbished... The, the Air Force just refurbished some of the first um, Colt commandos that they got for Vietnam, those like slap XM sides, yeah. Um, so they they still have weapons from Vietnam in service that guys are running around with. Would they have thermals? The Air Force has thermals, John, because but, but like the National Guard and Air Guard. Yeah, Air National thermals. Guard will have thermals. Yeah, every the reality is, even the military, like like every you know everybody's out running around buying fucking uh, IR lasers and shit so they can shoot their rifles at night. Even the there's nobody in the military that's doing that anymore. They're getting rid of all that fucking, all that shit because near peer, guess what? I can see you and I'm going to kill you. Like the the Ukrainians, the Ukrainian snipers were using laser range finders. They were using laser range finders because again, you know, uh, range estimation is one of those things that's kind of hard to teach, and guys catch on to it quick. Whereas if I can give you a sniper rifle and show you how it operates and if you know the range, it becomes a much easier solution, right? And so what we're doing is dropping these guys all these fucking sniper rifles and giving them laser range finders and, like, go kill Russians. What kind of sniper rifles are we giving them? Anything you can think of. AIs? They're definitely using AIs over there. Really? Yeah, they're using AIs. They're using I'm, – I'm sure that there are M24s over there. Maybe not M forties. If you have, Marine Corps is greedy, greedy pig. If you could have, if you were, United States gets invaded, you're operating within the United States. Okay. Any sniper rifle you want. 
Arctic Warfare. Of course, I wouldn't have one because unless, unless of course, unless of course, in a twist of fate, the British decide <laughs> to side with Tennessee seceding from the Union, and they start supplying military equipment to the Tennesseans to fight off the evil empire of America. Maybe the then Fr- maybe, maybe I'll the get French an Arctic would. warfare. Maybe the French would. Then I'd get a FAMAS, and FAMASs are kind of... Into the world, you'd rather carry an AI than a, something lighter? Wouldn't you rather just have like an actual deer, no, no. deer rifle? Why? Because it's lighter. No, the, the, goal of a, the goal of a sniper rifle is to, shoot, is to shoot your enemies outside the capability of their weapon system. So well, what kind of range? Meaning the military will the military will all tell you that the average range for a skilled rifleman is 400 between it depends if you're in the army or the marine corps 300 to 450 yards. What were you teaching? 450 yards outside of the capability of that system. So you would want all your all your engagements should be 500 yards or greater. So meaning I should be shooting all my targets at least at the 600 yard line to 1200, right? Because then they can't, they can't effectively re-engage me. So, you know, PKM machine gun, that changes things a little bit. 240 Gulf changes things a little bit, but I ain't worried about a machine gunner because he's got eight minutes of angle. So I'm not worried about him. As long as I can engage them at the 600 or further range, it's fine. So yeah, you want to you don't you don't want to you don't want a scoped a heavy scoped rifle that's that's only really good with inside those normal engagement range. At that point, you might as well pick up an M16. Would you ever climb a water tower to take a shot? Not if it was I would never climb a water tower to take a shot if a I planned on surviving that's what I was thinking. The yeah. thing, or B, unless it was, in, like if I didn't plan on surviving, a water tower is a perfect place. It's, there, it's very big up there, and you have 360 view. Um, or if it was single engagement, if it was if it was mono a mono combat, then a water tower is a viable solution to that because again. You want to you want to create a three sixty and you want to create a 360, 360 degree environment when you're going up against the adversary, meaning we're very linear as human beings. Uh, you can even see that in the, what's going on in uh, wherever the hell we're fighting now. But we're very linear, meaning we we're we're very focused forward, and not only are we very focused forward, we're also very kind of within that sphere, the sphere of what we see from head level up. We're, we're never looking up at the sky. We're never looking down on the ground. We're never, we never look behind us. Right. And so what you want to do is you want to make your, you want your adversary to not be safe at any angle. So the more fear he has of you coming from any direction, the easier it's going to be for you to manipulate that, that target and be able to shoot them when you want to shoot them instead of a surprise engagement. Now, the truth of the matter is if you think about the U S military outside of outside of the ninjas, right outside of fucking seal team soup back in the rear, eating steaks and then flying in and killing tangos and then flying back and eating and eating steaks outside of specifically target outside of specific target groups. The U.S. military has been playing uh, for the longest time. It's a go until you get shot at. So it's very rare that if you're talking regular U.S. military, not ninjas again, if you're talking rage, regular guys, the guys that are actually on the street, the guys that are actually doing the war fighting, because SEALs aren't. Um, if you're talking about those guys that are on the street holding street corners, we are react- We are reactive. We are not offensive. It's very rare that we go into an offensive, you know, for example, I'll, I'll use uh, uh, going into Kuwait. Very offensive. It was very, we were very offensive, and it would be you seeing an Iraqi and just fucking shooting them. Uh, where now, because of the environments we've been in for so long, we are very reactive. To the point where the where the U.S. military, the higher-ups, I'm going to say this again, all of you higher-ups suck. Um, to the point where they would be like, you can't even shoot until they shoot at you. 
right? Where they're like, nope, doesn't matter. He could walk across the street with a uh, a head a head in one arm and a fucking RPG in the other arm. If he doesn't shoot at you, you leave him alone. But you know that wouldn't be the rules of engagement against U.S. citizens. Initially, it would. That would go out the window very quickly. Well, it would go out the window. How quick did it go out in Los and, and What I would say is it would go out the window the minute... Um, one of them takes some fire. You know, the minute that, uh, I don't know, let's say 232nd truck company from uh, Montana is trying to resupply some M1 Abrams that are holding a blocking position in Nashville, and that convoy gets wiped out. Then they would be like, oh, shit. Would they get wiped out, or would they just be like, unass the vehicles, these are ours? I, okay, again. You're on ice. You're, uh, we, again, we, you're not even hostage. Come on, we'll feed you. Again, initially, there's going to be a lot of that. That's that's something that most people don't understand. Like, even if like if there was a revolutionary war, if if the country split in two, red you, against you blue. You mean when? Huh? Well, if the country split in two and it became red against blue, initially, there would be a ton, a fucking ton of... Roger that, we're heading out. And then oh, just, uh, yeah, yeah. You, you, you guys want these tanks? Yeah, fuck it. Take them. We don't care. There's going to be a ton of that, and there's going to be a ton of units. You know, even in your, you know, you, we'll take a. I just state need like, to pass through here on the way yeah. to Oklahoma. Well, we we'll, a shit. state like California, right? <laughs> if if we went red and blue, people think, oh shit, California would be fun. California would be a heavy hitter for the blues. No, they wouldn't. It, California is mostly red, and everywhere is mostly red. The reality is, even your national guard and your your army forces and Marine Corps forces are kind of pretty red too. So it's not like they would, it's not like the first civil war where they would just mobilize and create these lines and they'd be like, okay, we're going to attack you and you attack us. And it wouldn't be like that. It would be fighting everywhere and you would have full on army groups, Marine Corps battalions that would switch sides that would just be like, fuck you. I'm not fighting for you. I'm fighting for my hometown of fucking San Bernardino. So it would be a problem. It would be a serious problem. I mean, we went to L.A. for, you know, a one Marine Corps battalion. One Marine Corps battalion went to L.A. for, like, on the streets. I think we were there for three weeks on the street, maybe two weeks. I don't remember. It's been so long. But they lost a battalion's worth of ammunition. Where did it go? It went to the gangs. So the gangs stole it? Or uh -uh. what happened? Local residents who had joined the Marine Corps were really? giving arms and munitions to local residents who were not in the Marine Corps. Really? Yes. Did, that those, battalion commander got that battalion commander got launched into the atmosphere. Were those weapons ever used against troops? Have they? Or I have they not, surfaced. I have not. I have not heard that those weapons were ever used against, like, like for example, LAPD, but. I do know that they found a there was a hand grenade that they found in a playground, and something else, some other some other big thing. And it's when they did an inventory of what they took out and what they brought back, that battalion commander, which which is rare, that battalion commander was immediately fired. Like, did you hear? You have you noticed that you don't hear about gang crips and bloods and any of that stuff anymore? There's some there's some high up gang leaders mm -hmm. that have been on some of these talk shows and stuff in the last year or two said in the early 2000s, the feds came through and killed all of them. They're like the government killed, wiped all the gangs out. I heard that it was not the feds, that it was the Sinaloa cartel. Maybe. That the Sinaloa cartel was... Because that's all you hear about now. Yeah, that the, the Sinaloa cartel was... With the with the Crips and the Bloods, they were uh, they basically moved into the territory and said, "You're either gonna, you're either going to join us, or we're gonna wipe you out." So, they're either wiped out or they're part of the Sinaloa cartel, and that was because of uh, the way California was going with marijuana. I don't know, if, you know, whether it was the fucking Feds or the Sinaloa. I kind of believe that it was the, the Sinaloa because, again. The feds aren't ninjas. They're not. They're not that good. They're the reality is when you think of the FBI, the FBI is a bunch of fucking lawyers. Even the tag guys. The only reason why they. The only reason why they got to. They got to join the the HRT is because they were a lawyer. 
And so they're not like it. Meaning the FBI is not recruiting Delta guys to be in the FBI because the reality is the FBI looks at Delta Navy SEALs, MARSOC. They look at those guys as fucking knuckle draggers. And so I, 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 you wouldn't have a good, if you were, if you were a fucking, if you were a Delta guy, now there, there might be a couple of them in there, but if you were a Delta guy and you went from Delta to the FBI HRT, you would be like, <laughs> and, and, and again, if you're an HRT, I'm sure you're the pinnacle of your pinnacle, but your pinnacle is not that it's, it's not that you're not a tier one. Let's put it that way. So did you find a ghillie suit? I did not. I didn't even, the reality is I didn't even look, but I don't think I have one. I have one. No, you don't. Yeah. A real one or yeah. Something you bought on eBay. Cause I can buy one on eBay. No, I have the, the kit that you gave Cody. Oh yeah. Yeah. But that's not, that's, that's 72 hours. That's 72 hours of full work from being done. Well, you better get started. No, I, I mean, I don't need a ghillie suit. We're going to do it on video. What are we going to do? Putting it together? Yeah, show them how to make a real ghillie suit. Okay, so if if some shit kicked off. Shit kicked off. You had to, and things have collapsed here. Would collapsed? You, would you use a ghillie suit? Tell the truth. Hmm. That's just some bullshit for sniper school. I mean, if I, okay, am I, am I running around with my Arctic warfare, just dealing out my own brand of justice? Right. So ghillie suit. Yeah. So outside the golf course and yeah, I get you. But, uh, I mean, there was a book I read where they were into the world. I don't, I don't want to say I, like into the world is such a different, it's such gonna, a different you'd have world. to, I'm not, you'd have to shoot and move really fast. It, I'm it'd not be a, more like a uh, French underground kind of shit. I'm not a, uh, who was enemies at the gate? That was Russia. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. But if he had a ghillie suit, he'd have used it. Would he? Yeah. He would have used it for sure. Cause of the type of fighting they were doing that urban, all that, that urban warfare would have worked perfect for him. The problem now, again, a ghillie is, suit in urban warfare. Yeah. Cause of the, the, the more the reality is, the more destruction you do to, uh, the more destruction you do to a city. The more destruction you do to a city, the better it becomes for the defender, not the attacker. When they roll in, like so, here's something. I, when I was asking about the water tower, or something I thought, uh -huh. when they roll into a city, you never see them shoot up the water towers. Like I would think, if a if a bunch of trucks roll into the city, right? There's going to be some asshole 18 year old with a 240 that's going to stitch the side of that fucking water tower. They probably do. You never hear it's about a, it or see well, it. Well, because there's so much, there's so much. Do the air assets try to take out the water towers? No, they, they not specifically. The only, the, when you, when you're talking about any, let's just say anything that's above ground, right? Whether it's a water tower or a fucking, uh, a chimney, you know, smokestack or something, anything that's above ground, air assets are only going to, uh, your assets, whether it's an airplane or a tank, they're only going to attack that a asset if it becomes a threat. So, for example, if I take a, a, an aircraft gun or if I got a, a man pad and I'm up on the water tower, that water tower now becomes a threat. So they would shoot up the water tower. But outside of it becoming a threat, we don't, again, outside of what the Russians are currently doing, we don't target specific infrastructure things unless it's a threat. Ground forces. Now, if you're talking day before the war, yes, the Air Force will blow up, you know, a water treatment plant, a hospital, a, anything that we anything that we think would can be, be used to them. beneficial but to specifically target things that are not a uh, military target or military threat we don't do that would emp shut down those thermals air blast or space blast in theory emp would shut down everything it's gonna fry electronic them. electronic but unless you had them in your faraday bag but again do you have a faraday bag i don't have a faraday bag because the emp is not a credible do you want a fair oh, credible threat? So you don't want a Faraday bag sponsor? 
Oh, I would love a Faraday sponsor. If you had an extra set of night, would you just like keep your? Because I'm I'm sure you're rolling around with your thermals in your truck right now. This is Nana's car, so it's just NVGs. I don't give them the good Would, stuff. Wouldn't you put your extra set of NVGs or thermals in a Faraday bag just in case it worked? No. Really? Currently. If we walked in there and I gave you one, I, you wouldn't just take a set and put I, it in there? Currently. I don't, I'm not saying I wouldn't put it in there, but. Well, dude, I have shit sitting all over this fucking place, right? Huh? When I move something, I'm like. I haven't seen that in three years. I wondered where that went. I thought somebody stole it, right? I should probably take that and just put it in some Faraday bags. Why not? Just in case. If you got it, you might as well. If you you, know, you got so much extra, you should. But here's the thing. It is such a non-starter. Like, it's not, it's it's such a non-starter for the U.S., for, for. You know, there's a kid that the made, world. a kid made a device. A kid made a device and knocked the power out for like a mile around his house. It's such a non-starter for the world that the U.S. military doesn't even consider it a real threat. It does. No, it doesn't. Yeah, the DEMSA and stuff, yeah. It doesn't consider it a real threat. No, like, at the at the operational level, they don't even brief that. And the reason why is because it, for it to be effective, right, it's very... It's very specific. I know people are like, "Oh, they'll just they'll just detonate this thing in the upper atmosphere, and uh, it'll shut the power out all over the United States." That's not how it works. It takes a nuclear it takes a nuclear explosion to create an EMP big enough in order to shut. Like for example, if they if they if they did a if they did an upper atmosphere burst over Los Angeles, correct? They could shut down part of Los Angeles. It wouldn't shut down all of Los Angeles. It's it's too directional. It's too big. So in order to knock out all the every all the infrastructure in the United States, you'd have to use a lot of nuclear weapons. And at that point, why? If what, they what? if they hit Clarksville, do you think you would catch any of that? No, no, too far. Why would they? The, you have to you have to look at it from a strategic point. There's only one reason why you would do that, and that would be to invade. And everyone, everyone. There's no one in the world that thinks, hey, you know what would be a good idea? Boots on the ground in America. There's no one, not even the Chinese. And they could, in theory, you know, two million man army, maybe get them here in canoes and shit. I don't know. But <laughs> nobody thinks boots on the ground in the United States is a good thing. You're better off. You're your, really, your government will bring them here. You're better off. You're better off hitting all your major infrastructure with an actual nuclear weapon and then letting America eat itself. You don't need to put boots on the ground. You just need to, you just need to hit LA, New York, Washington, DC, and maybe a major city in every single state. So maybe half a dozen, half a dozen weapons, but then you have to be prepared for whatever the fuck we're going to do. And, we're gonna eat corn with those sloppy ass with that sloppy ass administration that we have right now. They're gonna fucking they're just gonna push the button and launch everything, and everybody's gonna be fucked. You don't think Trump would have launched everything? Here, the difference between here's the difference between Trump uh, and Biden. Yeah, I don't have. I'm, a, I don't, I'm, you, I'm not saying I don't have a the, Trump problem. I'm gonna <laughs> give you the difference between Trump and Biden. The difference Biden between, will launch it by accident. The difference between Trump and Biden is with Trump. They were all scared of him. Yes. And because they were all scared of him, I Nothing I would bet in. I would bet money. <laughs> I would bet money that the naval officer that was following him around with the football that was following him is around with the suitcase. Is that a naval officer? I think it usually is a navy guy. Why but a navy guy? I don't know how they do that stuff, John. They just pick random dudes. But I am sure that the dude that was following him around with that suitcase that if if Trump would have been like let me see it. Let me check it out. Let me see what's going on in there. If the fucking suitcase would have been empty <laughs> because the permanent government did not want him to have any control over anything. So I'll bet it was empty. I'll bet if, if Donald, if the North Koreans would have attacked us, he would have had to call some people and been like, Hey, the fucking suitcase is empty. And then, you know, some general like Miley would be like, we're sorry. We just, you know, we kind of didn't trust you. 
And, you know, four or five American cities would get blown up, and then there would be some sort of response. Sam has the suitcase with him. Yeah, it's, it's over at John's house. No, it's probably, it'd, be the, it'd be the fucking uh, luggage stealer. It'd be in, yeah, it'd be in, it, it would be in Biden's, uh, gar- it's in his garage next to the Corvette, next to the everything else. Like, we, again, let's go back to the National Guard guy. Yes, that's, yes, full circle. Let's go back to the National Guard guy. Hold on we, a second, while we're on that. So you do not want an EMP shield on one of your trucks? Takes like ten minutes to install. Does the install guy install it? Yes. Because I can't install yes, it. Yes, you can. Do Brian, I want an EMP shield on my truck? No, Brian, I can I, do it. Hey, check it out. We have a code. Anybody listening? EMP shield. Use code SOE. It'll get you fifty dollars off your order. And they insure your shit up to twenty five thousand dollars from a lightning strike. When I get the war wagon. What is the war wagon? Subaru. <laughs> what? When I get the Subaru War Wagon. What? What the fuck? What is it? I'll put the EMP shield on the Subaru War Wagon. What is it? Subaru Outback. Who, who has that? I'm going to get one. You've, you, but you don't know where you're getting it from? No, 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 no. I just, I want a, I want a War Wagon and the Subaru Outback fits the, fits the needs of a War Wagon. Society collapses. I'm cutting the roof off of Geo Metro. You haven't seen them when they wasteland warrior those no, things out. No, Holy no. shit! Because it's light enough, I can pick it up if it gets stuck somewhere. That's good. That's a good. A, that's good. I'm gonna have a mini gun. I'm just hoping that everybody. I'm just hoping that everybody confuses me for a lesbian. When we run in, when we run into Nashville to get all the tigers and lions from the zoo, we're gonna do that. I have. It's already. I have plans gonna, for it. We have a. I have a. You want to, but see, the difference between you and me is you want to bring them here and and put them in with the dogs and shit. Yeah. I just want to. I just want to cut them loose. I want to feed people to them. I want to cut them loose. I want. I want. Well, when uh, we're putting the perimeter around the city, the town, we'll put a corridor around there. We'll we'll fence them in. I just want to. I don't want to fence them in. I want to cut them loose. So when uh, when Bill and Johnny finally leave their apartment in downtown Nashville to go scrounge up some uh, whatever's left in the canned good aisle, and they're walking down the street, and it's all quiet, and there's nobody there, and they're like. Oh my God, that EMP really shut everything down. I want, I want from the corner, a large yellow animal to just snatch up Bill and drag him into the alleyway, and them have to f- spend two figure hours. What that was trying to figure out what is eating everybody around here. Well, I was thinking more like Day Day. Day Day. There's some. Uh, there's some government housing about twenty minutes. Nah, from man. Here. Uh-uh. No, man. Like way. in uh, Lord of War. Yeah, you no know way. where they had those hyenas on. The, yeah. I want that. No way, no way. If that, if the lion, the lion would know better to go into government housing because he'd be on the spit, boy. You, you see, don't you think just so, see, man. You just be. I don't think you so. just see them. You just see them boys down there just turning that thing. So, fat so when I rolls I'm, off of it. when we're when we're doing the rescue mission, okay, rescue. on the on the, uh, the, on the animals, I'm gonna rescue every midget also. I, I think that I think that's I think because they're yeah. gonna they're gonna be in the Why back not? of my Geo Metro running the machine guns. I think they deserve they deserve people's help just like anybody else. Yeah, I mean you can bunk them easier. Yeah, two to a bunk. That's right. Hot rack them. Well, I mean, there's gonna be a lot of hot racking going on. That's for sure. <laughs> All right, back to the uh, 21 year old. What, what, oh, was, what that? was that? Some, what oh, is that? It's a love oh bug. don't don't crush that man. It'll, it'll, well, it'll what are you gonna it. do? Don't flick them. I don't know. Use your hand. Put them and in get the, hey, put them in the cup. I'm drinking that. Put them in the yeah, but it's got a lid. Go away. Oh man, yeah, he's all over your fingers now. Um, yeah, 21 year old. First off, what state? There's either there's either two things there's either two things going on, and yes, uh, Miley should be fired for this. There's either two things going on. One. This is a total. This is a total fucking setup. Yep, it's either a total setup or the state of military classi- classified documents is just a fucking complete shamble, and those clowns don't know what they have, where it is, or what. Now the I haven't heard Mike from Forward Observer talk about this yet. I I, I would think he the, probably has. I'd the, be curious to see his take on this. The problem is the problem with his the now this this could be the reality. Is this could be some shit they wanted out there? Shit they want out there because again, remember you've had all these people running around talking about Ukraine winning the war and Ukraine doing good. Mind you, they're doing good, 
right? No one would have thought that, that, like, we didn't, no one in the United States thought the Ukrainians were going to do this good. And they're doing good. But they're getting slammed. And they're getting slammed hard because Russia has taken off the gloves and they are, they've, they've gone back to Stalin tactics. They have, they're using artillery, they're using artillery to take ground. They're bringing in their infantry. Behind the infantry are dudes with shovels. Behind the dudes with the shovels are dudes with um, ammunition. What are they They're doing with the shovels? 45 feet a trench. 40, it's 45, 45 miles a trench a day. Do you see that they're so all they, through Russia? They're putting trenches? Yeah, in? so the, the truth of the matter is what people aren't talking about is every time the Russians take a, a foot of ground, they're digging defensive positions behind it. The Ukrainians Don't are they not. have machines that do that? Yeah, they got all kinds of shit, but so not shovels, shovels. No, they they're bringing shovel brigades. If you if you look at Ukrainian news, they will. There's a laughable laughable article about how the Russians are out of weapons, and so they're sending people to the front with just shovels. That's not what they're doing. It's a tactic. Are we it's talking a about like tactic they used in World War II? Do you mean like e tools or uh-huh. like? Yeah, well, no, they're full like shovels. Home Depot sponsor. This. This, this is cobalt. It's basically. It's basically the Russians' version of engineer battalions. So they'll move up forward, and then they'll dig defensive positions. The reason for this is, unlike the Ukrainians, every piece of ground that the Russian, every inch of grounds that the Russians have taken, they have created a defensive position to fall back on. So, for example, they keep talking about, uh, I can't think of the name of the city, where the Russians, have, the Russians every day, they lose 100 yards. They lose 100 yards. Well, the reason why... The city it, loses 100 yards. Yeah, the Ukrainians are losing 100 yards. And people are like, it's not great gains for the Russians. It's, it's terrible gains for the Russians. But what they're doing is they're digging defensive positions behind that. So when the Ukrainians, if the Ukrainians ever have the capability to counterattack, they're going to have to go up against prepared defensive positions. Unlike what's happening right now, the Russians aren't going against prepared defensive positions because the Ukrainians cannot dig dirt as fast as the Russians. And so it's going to be much harder for the Ukrainians to take back take back the positions or take back the land that they have lost than it was for the Russians to take it. Are these like indentured servants that are digging? They're not ah, it's, combat it's, people. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's just, it would be just like... Uh, you would consider it just like an engineer battalion, meaning you're you imo- you immediately move your so combat capable. M- maybe not combat capable. My guess is they're my guess is they are not com they are they wouldn't be considered combat they wouldn't be considered combat arms forces. They would be considered just engineer battalions. Uh now in Again, in the in the Soviet Russia world, everyone is a rifleman. It doesn't matter whether you're trained or not. So, if, if for example, if the let's say the let's say the Ukrainians actually have been hiding half a million troops somewhere in Europe, and they're going to counteroffensive, they're going to do a counteroffensive. All those dudes holding shovels would get guns, whether or not they would be whether or not they would be a formidable force is a different story. But again, it's all about shooting bullets, right? As long as bullets are flying, if, if I, all I have to do is get you to hesitate to break up your formations at any given, at any given moment, if you're, if you're offensively operating and I can get you to stall somewhere along that operational front, it's a problem for you, not me. And it, it, if that's, you know, a hundred guys with shovels, out there smacking your leopard two tank, so you got to stop and sweep them off. It's a problem. Do you have to sweep them off a tank? You couldn't just run over them. If you don't, if you, if the Ukrainians make the classic mistake that the Russians are making right now, and they do not operate their armored vehicles with infantry, then yes, you have to get out and sweep them off. Because once they're on your tank, it's a problem. A tank, uh, you know, a a tank should never be without infantry. If they were doing it right, if the Russians had been doing it right from the get-go and using infantry using infantry units to, to identify, locate anti-tank systems prior to moving the tanks in the battlefield and then having those infantry units in support of those tanks, 
they wouldn't have suffered as badly as they had. Are they safe inside the tank? No, uh-uh, not at all. You don't want you, you don't want cockroaches all crawling around all over on your tank. Once they're on your tank, it's a problem. Why? Because there's all kinds of things they can do. <clears throat> like what? Well, you know, even a grenade, even just a grenade can stop a tank. Do all tanks have that bulge in the barrel? Uh, all modern tanks do, yes. And if you disable that, if you dis- that's ceramic, right? Uh, I don't think it is. I don't. I mean, I don't know what it is like on the on the M1 Abrams. I don't think it's ceramic anymore. Um, if you disable the bore evacuator, then the tank fills up with gas every time you fire the gun. So, does that immediately disable a in crew, or does it just put gas fumes? Inside? It just put. It just fills the all the. So basically, what, I thought it completely disabled the gun. No, once you. All the bore evacuator does is it forces all those gases out the out the front of the gun after they fire instead of going into the crew compartment, right? So if you disabled the the, the gas evacuator, um, some of the gas would go back into the compartment. Now those compartments aren't very big, so you don't have to have a you don't have to have a lot of fart in the compartment for everybody to know somebody farted in the compartment. There, you know, even the M1 Abrams, which is uh, huge compared to most Soviet tanks, you you get that gas going back into the vehicle, it's not going to be long before they're opening those hatches. And then what is that? That's, uh, if they're, I wonder if they've given those guys M4s. But either way, you're you're coming out of a hole. Try, it, it's a, So I know Colt made, ass. Colt made some little, short short gun it was a nine millimeter uh-huh. for tank crews at, at at some point in time i remember that thing um will a thermite grenade burn through a tank no thermite grenades aren't as cool as you think i know and you think they're really cool and then you you throw one on some you throw one on some dishkas because you think you're going to melt all these things together and it just it just burns and doesn't do shit to those guns people want to know what was on the truck what truck the truck. I don't what truck? Coming across the the border patrol checkpoint on the trailer. I don't know. What was it? Oh, coming through they want to know what was on the truck. I, that well, has to be a podcast in itself. Yeah, you left them hanging I a couple could, of times I could, ago. That could Okay, so the kid, the Intel kid. Yeah, we keep missing that Intel kid. Uh well you keep distracting me. I know it's you. You're the distractor. <sighs> Again. Either they wanted this information out. Do you think he's or, in custody? Yeah, he's definitely in custody. You think so? Yeah, he's in custody. I mean, the FBI got him. You don't think they swept Which him is, away and he's hanging out with Epstein? No, no. Uh-uh. Do you think they take those people and they're, they're all those people that they're really on Mars? No, they're, they, they, it's like Bin Laden. He owns a fucking 7-Eleven and... <laughs> Probably in, in El Cajon. El Cajon, yeah. It's, <laughs> Probably. It's not. They don't kill those guys. That's why they didn't show his body. Um, the interesting part is either this is either, I, I no matter what, it's a fiasco, unless the CIA did it. It's a fiasco for the Department of Defense. Because here you have. Apparently, he this information had been out there like six months. Here you have, yeah. But it, it was his buddies that fucked him over. <laughs> you have this lone way too young of a kid who has this maybe a top secret clearance but i bet he doesn't have a top secret clearance but he has a secret clearance he's operating in a skiff that has access to all this classified information initially he's photocopying it and taking it home and then he's like i'm really weird i'm really freaked out because i'm photocopying it and everybody sees me photocopying this stuff so i'm just going to steal the documents Okay, now you have, first off, why is there a photocopy photocopier in, in the skiff, skiff for classified information? That's, that, that's, that's, a, that's a big red flag. Second, how did no one know that he was taking classified information home with him? Because the classified information has to be turned in at the end of the day. It's all counted for. It's not. It's not like. It's not like there's a there's a jar of pins that are classified, and you just grab your pin and you use it all day, and then you put it back in the jar when you leave. That's not. There, there's a security manager, and that motherfucker's in charge of every piece of classified information in there. So the security manager was asleep at the wheel. Like 
the reality is, again, if the military had its shit together, they would go, they would have arrested him, and then they would have went in there and fired every person in the skiff, every one of them, from fucking PFC Denots who, who only make sure that there's ink in the copier, to the fucking CO. Fired them all and went. This is, is a is this is a security a failure. There's not copiers in the skiffs. I am sure that most of them have copiers in there, but the skiff, again, the, do the skiffs they can access the SIPRNet, right? Yes. Which is a secured internet. Yes. Got it. So it's not just like there's a server there and there's no, no. They, they, that's it's it. all supposed to it's all supposed to begin and end there and those skiffs. The but skiffs talk to each other though. Yes. The interesting thing is, can they get on like SOE tactical gear from their computer in the skiff? Yes. Unless you're blocked. <laughs> Unless, and well, no. We had dude. We had dudes saying they couldn't get on 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 bases and different yeah. installations. Yeah, base with okay. Website. Base is different. Base is different than what's going on in the skiff. Nothing is blocked in the skiff because who is to decide what is tactical information and what's not? So are they on the dark web? Well, they you you know the tour, which is the the tour, which is the dark web. Have you ever used it? I have never used it. Because I, I here's my here's my thing. Okay, the tour, which is the dark web, was designed it, by the United States Navy. Yeah. So I heard it's like uh, old time chat rooms, basically. Like you had to, you go to a room and there's uh-huh. all these. You have to click on them to wait for the picture. Yeah, I'm sure it's shit. not very user friendly. But uh, I always look at it like this. Okay, it's like, it's like John, if you came to me and you said, "Hey, you're never gonna guess what happened. I was down at this store." And in the back of the store, there was a dude, and he was giving guns away. We should go get some guns. I'm going to be like, that's a uh, fat, yeah, setup. ATF, hello, it's the fucking setup. They're they're doing some stupid shit. And that's the same, like, when people talk about the black web, I'm, the black web I'm like, <laughs> yeah, this is just the CIA collecting every piece of data they can on people that want to do illegal shit. So, no, I'm not going on the black web to look up, you know, Did you see- uh, dildos. They just arrested a, an army kid. I think he's twenty years old. For uh, he was he was looking to be an assassin, and he was on some. It, it's absolutely asinine, like hitman for hire or something. And they fucking rolled his ass up like a couple days ago uh, in, in I Tennessee. Here, I don't know if that. I don't know if they probably had to, because that's that's usually how they do it is how they usually do it is they have to create a hit for you to be hitman for hire. Meaning they didn't just arrest him. I would assume. Yeah. They he didn't. took the contract or whatever. Yeah. He had to, have, you know, some money was exchanged and photos and stuff like that, which, you know, to me, that's kind of like, so it's, it's a little entrappy. It's, sure. it's a little entrappy. Like kids say all kinds of shit that ain't, legit it's, it's, people say all kinds of shit that's not legit it's like it's like arresting a kid for selling oregano and passing it as weed right yeah should that really be a crime if you were dumb enough to fucking buy it i mean at this at this point if you're in law enforcement and you're arresting anybody for weed it's like i just use or or cocaine and you're selling flour and, and again i'm not a i'm not pro weed i've never smoked weed yeah i'm not pro weed but guess what most of the country is so you're you're kind of banging your head on the wall. Yeah, I'm like if you can't if you can't park a victim right here, you don't have a crime. I'm a victim. I'm a victim because I didn't get none of that cash that they get for that sweet sweet icky sticky. And that's what I need a little of that cash that they get for that some, sweet some sweet co- icky some COVID sticky COVID money. I need one of those. I need one of the really what I need to happen is one of those armored cars that they use to transport all the money cash. from the icky stickies to. Get a flat tire, maybe spin off the road, crash in the river oh, upside hey, maybe, down, and then maybe I find Maybe it. that's what this CBDC shit's about because they're not getting their cut out of that cash. Maybe. I just thought about that. because I mean, let's be clear. You have whole fucking security companies moving truckloads of yeah. fucking cash from those dispensaries let's because, be- because they unbanked them. They turned uh-huh. off all their shit. Well, did you know that... <laughs> did you know a, a sheriff's department in San Diego? Okay. Again... 100% illegal. There's only one sheriff's department no, in San Diego. I'm in in California. Okay. I'll say California. I don't I don't believe it was San Diego Sheriff's Department. But there's uh remember, the selling of marijuana is federally illegal. Legal, yes. Okay? So there was a sheriff's department in California that was hitting 
those armored cars. <laughs> Forfeit your law, so, bro. So did it go to guns? No, the the people in the armor, you know, the the SWAT team would surround these armored cars, be like, get out of the car. They'd be like, you know, we're taking money from this place to that place. And they would be like, no, you ain't. It's ours. This is drug money. And so they were using forfeiture laws to hit those trucks. They had to have been getting millions. Did you see the Stallone TV show where the king of... I oh, where he's in... Uh, where he's at, he just got out of prison. Yeah, and they move him to... The king of Detroit or... No, I no, he's in, like, he's in like... He's in like... The middle of nowhere. New Mexico or some shit? Like Arizona? There was only something? two episodes. Did, did it really go off the air? There was only two episodes? I don't know. Am I missing something? It was, it was, it was pretty entertaining. I watched both episodes, and I never saw a third one. Uh, did you did you see the one where he's getting his driver's license? <laughs> yeah, that's the yeah, and he fucks the ATF chick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, so but, okay, back to the Air National so Guard. So is this guy. kid ever going to get his day in court, or have they? He's already had his first day in court. Really? Yeah, but back to How the. How did he plead? I don't know. I didn't. I didn't. I, I want to hear his I, story. I didn't pay attention to it because it's uh, it's uh, all propaganda. I want to hear the phone calls he's making from jail. But he had a, he had a, he had the problem. Here's the problem. He had a top secret document from the CIA that was inner CIA only. Right. That's, Meaning I've it heard never, people say that. Yeah. It never, like it, it doesn't hit the, it doesn't hit the cipher net. He, there's not a, there's not a, uh, a, a chat room that he can get on and be like, where's all them, handed it to him. Where's all them secret documents from the CIA? It, he couldn't have got that. You so he, you think he thought he was being a good guy? No, 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 no. This was, uh, again, all of this, as crazy as it sounds, he is just a kid, right? He is just a kid. And all of this, all this classified information that he was taking um, was to impress his friends. You think somebody planted it knowing he would take it? Uh, well, may, this, is, this, is, this is kind of with that, with that top secret document. This is maybe what happened. Is it somebody within the somebody within the command noticed that he was taking those documents? Okay, reported it up the chain of command, and then the chain of command or reported up the chain of command, and then they were like, "Hey, in order for us to be sure that he's stealing these documents, let's put this out there. Let's put this out there to see if he's stealing these documents." Would they have put out a fabricated document or a real one? fucking knows yeah that's that's the thing you don't know if it you don't know if it's if it's real or not now the, the issue here's the real issue the the real issue is all the documents they did put out don't make you well, would think if like they were you u.s think, forces in and yeah. you think they were just softening up society no by putting I, that I, the, out there the problem is the documents that were put out don't make us look good they make us look bad and you would think if if it was if it was some sort of disinformation op that they would be like Biden had ice cream and candy bars in Kiev <laughs> or, you know, something stupid or like we've just sent 400 M1 Abrams to Poland to give to the, but that's not what it was. Have you ever seen a top secret document? No. Have you ever secret. seen a secret? Yeah. Secret. Is it stamped on the front with red secret? No. Uh-uh. None of that. Have you ever look at it and you're like, why is this secret? A hundred percent. Most, almost 90% <laughs> like, of all. I heard an interview with a. Almost 90% a of that. all secret documents Almost all documents that are secret, there's no reason to be secret. Like the SOE uh, compound is full of rocks. Yeah, no shit. I'll give you an example. Um, there, there's a, there's a super, there's a, uh, I don't even know what they call it, but we called it the White House, and it's where all the classified documents for Camp Pendleton got generated, and so a, a staff and CO would have to be on like almost like fire watch. Uh, you would get assigned. Like I, I think I did it twice. You get assigned to this and they give you, <laughs> they give you the bullshittest. Basically you got a, you got a car and the bullshittest briefcase that like, I don't know where they found this briefcase, but it was the bullshittest briefcase on the planet. Like I, it didn't make any sense. And you would sit at the meth at night Meth headquarters, and if any classified information came, you would have to go pick it up. 
and then bring it back to the MEF and then give it to the watch officer. And then he would file it away for the general in the morning, right? And so I'm doing this. I have this duty. And they're just like, okay, this is all you do. You take your briefcase. You go over to the window. You pass the briefcase through. You give me your ID. They pass the briefcase back. You bring it back. You give it to the lieutenant. Now, no one said, don't look at it. But they also didn't say, look at it. Because they're putting it in a briefcase. So you go over there. Is the briefcase not locked? Oh, it's, it's <coughs> John. This briefcase is so the briefcase that they were putting the shit in was so laughable. Like you think this was just a joke. No, no, it was legit. This was legit. You don't think they were just fucking with the guys that had that? No, because no. They, uh, at that at that level, nobody has time for it. And so you go over there. It's it's one of those. It's like a, it's like the old timey ATM windows that they've put the the reflective tape on it so you can't see in there but they can see you and i get it i get it they have a job to do and those guys are that's that's all they do and they're probably just as pissed off that they're in there at two o'clock in the morning printing this stuff out as i am going to pick it up and so they're all name rank social security number give me your card but they're doing it all official again there's nothing wrong with that uh but it is when I know they know. Here's the thing. I know that they 100% know what's going in the briefcase. And for them to act the way they do about what goes in that briefcase every day is kind of like, okay, guys, even you should know this is dumb. Um, and so they would, uh, you, you put the thing in there. They put the information in there. They give your ID back. You get in the car and you drive back and give it to the lieutenant. You, you, five six times a night you go over to do this right you go over to do this and then you know finally i'm like hmm. close the briefcase take it give it to lieutenant hmm. close the briefcase give it to lieutenant nothing like not a single even though it was all secret not a single thing not a single thing that they didn't say on CNN probably eight hours before. Or things like, like they would, I don't know why they did this. It would be the weather report. So it would be weather report for the next eight hours in the Gulf of the China Sea. Maybe there's something embedded in it. No, nothing embedded in it. It was, it's, it it's information that they're passing. That it, The reality is they don't want, it's, even with regular classified information, like the classified information that this kid had, what they don't want, they want, there's two things about class, classified information that they, they don't want. They don't want classified information to be leaked that gets someone killed. So if you have classified information concerning uh, agents or, you know, uh, people that are helping us around the world, and that gets leaked and it gets somebody killed, problem. Right, because then you it's harder to recruit people if mm -hmm. you can't protect them because you're just out there on CNN going, yeah, Bill works for us. Um, that's a problem. The other thing is usually something gets classified because we don't want anybody to know how we got the information. Mm -hmm. So, for example, a weather report might get classified. Um, a weather report might get classified because we're actually – uh, bootlegging a Chinese satellite in order to get said weather report. And we don't want the Chinese to know that we're fucking listening to all their weather uh, reports. Right. Yep. So it's usually, it's usually how the information gets collected or an actual person, right? We don't want that to happen. But for the most part, again, 90% of all stuff that's ca is classified is just dumb. Like it's dumb. So they, like, you know, example is classified secret. The USS Peleliu is pulling into Perth tomorrow. Everyone in the world knows that the U.S. Peleliu is pulling into Perth tomorrow. It's not a secret, but they still classify it. And I think maybe that's to give the general something to read so he can be like in the morning with his coffee. Keep them in practice, keep them in rotation. Yep, this is some really important bullshit. And Because and even most people will tell you, in, even in the intel world, they have CNN playing on the in the office, in the skiff, CNN is playing because – there that's where they're going to get that they're going to get that first hit is from there when we went to mogadishu when we went to mogadishu we knew about black hawk down 
before the intelligence, before the intel chain made it to the ship. So we were watching it on TV, and then I think like 10 hours later, they're like, hey, we got the intel on what's going on in Mogadishu. And we're like, we, right. it's right here. So it's just it's just weird um, on what's classified and what's not classified. And then, you know, again, uh, Hillary Clinton's got a fucking full server in her basement. That's okay. Uh, Joe Biden's got fucking documents in his in his garage next to his toolbox. That's okay. 20-year-old airmen, we're going to fry him. We're going to burn him at the stake. It just, it's either, it, it has to be like this. Either treat all classified information exactly the same at all levels or don't. So what do you think they're going to do to the kid? Oh, they're going to get him with the Espionage Act. And hang him? They're gonna, well, they're not going to hang him. They're going to put him in jail for a long time, which is which is sad because the truth of the matter is the kid was just trying to, he was just trying to be cool, and that's why it was released on the forum that because it was just game, it was game, it was a gamer forum, and that's why it was released. He's not the one that released it out onto Twitter. It was one of his buddies who released it on Twitter, and so he was just trying to be cool, and because he was trying to be cool, he in trouble. I'm not saying that what he did was right. I'm, you know, Correct, he's not because right. the truth of the matter is, you know, on the right, everyone is like, "Oh my God, I can't believe we're crucifying this whistleblower." He's not a whistleblower. <laughs> he wasn't releasing any of that information to expose the military in any way. He was just trying to get other kids to like him. So that's all that was. So I feel sorry for him. Really, I feel like he's going to get crucified for some. He's going to get crucified for some shit that. I mean, in a in a real world, in a real just world, they would look at it and they'd be like, "Yeah, you're done. I mean, you're you're fucking, you're done in the military. That's for sure. You're getting kicked out of the military, and this is going to follow you around and haunt you for the rest of your life. I mean, what more do you want to do to this kid for some information that even you really look at it doesn't really mean a whole lot, and almost all of it you can find it. I mean, if you really look." That's the thing about classified. That, that that's the thing about classified information. Now I'm not talking about top secret information like uh, killing John F. Kennedy, but classified information. A lot of it's out there. It's just already out there, and you have to put the pieces together. And that's what well, I think. Even more of it is the disinformation, right? How do you how do you discern between the classified and the bullshit? Yeah, and that's what a, and that's what a lot of agencies do. They just take, you know, they take a piece over here that says. Uh, China's doing this. It doesn't really make sense. And then there's a China thing down here. And then they put it all together and they present it and say, hey, this is what we think the Chinese are going to do. So it's just, I don't know. I do feel sorry for that kid, but what are you going to do? Got it. He's in a, he's in a skiff where he's in a, he's a 21 year old in a skiff where there should have been adult leadership. And that adult leadership was fucking not doing their job. And all those guys should get fired. Let's start holding Let's let's the reality is let's start holding the military accountable. We give them way too much money for bullshit that they're doing right now. They are not doing a good job. We should start holding them accountable. And that's at the top of the level. If Lance Corporal Bonatz is if Lance Corporal Bonatz is the one that fucked this up, the fucking four star needs to feel it. And I'm not talking about shame on you, General. I'm talking about they need to start firing these motherfuckers because the catastrophes, the things that are happening in the military at a catastrophic level, such as all those Marines that were killed in the pullout of Afghanistan, at the very least, the battalion commander should have been fired. But that is a that is a CAG level mistake. They did not put those guys in there in the right way. And that whole fucking the reality is Miley. Sh if if this was. If this was 20 years ago, maybe 25 years ago, Miley would have been hanging from a yard arm. There is no way we would have allowed that to gone un... We would have let that happen and just not punish anybody for it. What's a yard arm? That's a naval term for a... Um, Sky crane thing? No, no, it's a yard arm is a... Ah, I'm going to mess it up. I don't know. It's a naval term for a... I believe it's the it's the long it's the long sail the yard arm. Got it. And that's usually where you hang people from. Who's the yard arm. Corporal Bonatz. He's just your average marine. I just, just heard you say the yeah. name a few times. Because he's just an average marine. He's just trying to he's just trying to make it in the world. And the Marine Corps has done a disservice to him because they are not training him well, and they are not leading him well. 
our leadership is in the fucking toilet. They're, they're more concerned about um, things that look good on paper than they are actually about war fighting skills. Got it. What do you got sitting over there? Uh, split chest rig. 308 split. 308 home. split chest rig. It'll hold any magazine. <clears throat> any magazine that is 308 of caliber. I mean, it would hold... It'll hold M4 mags. It'll hold M4 mags. It'll just be a little... Voluminous. Voluminous. But G3. What's this one? M14. M14. Yep. M14. You're fucking, you're mag, you put it in there. I know, but I have a, I have a, I have a Galil mag in here. That's a Galil mag? Looks just like an I M14 mag. That's an M14. Yep, so yeah. kind of similar. And then uh, for all you new generation kids, P mag. 20 round, 30 round would fit in there too. It'd just be stacked a little high. Would you use a 30 round 308 mag? You wouldn't load that hole up. You wouldn't load that. Not really. With four 30 rounders. Not really. Cause it, it, you're, you're using it for a different, like, I don't, I don't consider like if you say battle rifle, right? What is a battle rifle? Um, really an M4 is a battle rifle. Cause you're battling, you're battling with it. If we're going to go up to 308 caliber, I'm not really using it in the same way I'd be using an M4. So while 30-round magazines are cool, they are cool to have, I really wouldn't be using it in that way. I'd be using it even like even like a Galil or uh, a G3. I would still probably be using it as a more long-range capable system or a crazy-ass full-auto. Like if you had a – if you had – if if you – had a full automatic 7.62 gun, then that 30 round magazine would be nice. But 20 rounds is all you need in 308. It just starts getting too heavy. Or just being able to punch through more stuff. Yeah, way more stuff. The, the 308 will do way more damage than a 5.56 will. If you fill IBC totes up with sand, will bullets go through them? No. Three feet, all you need is, all you need is three feet of sand or water. Will an M2 shoot through it? 50 cal? Nope, not an IBC tote. Just sand. Yeah, if you fill that IBC tote up with sand, one round of 50 cal will stop in that IBC tote. No problem. Would you be better off filling it up with rocks or gravel? No, no, no. You don't want... Okay, so uh, defensive position. If you're in a defensive position, and this sucks if you're in 29 palms because you kind of have to. You don't want to... You don't want to create the top of your bunker with anything um, rocks. Because it can shrapnel down. Because it will... Because... Because what will happen is that that bullet, when the bullet impacts the rock, it will shear off rock, and the rock will immediately be going the same speed as the bullet was when it hit the rock. And so now you have just fragmentation coming off your off of what should have been sand. So you, you're better off taking sandbags and stacking them on top of the rocks so that you can hopefully not get hit with a piece of rock in the eyeball. If you're filling up IBC totes. You'd probably want to stagger them, right? IBC, IBC, and then have one staggered off behind it <clears throat> in case the bullet goes between the two IBC toes. In theory, yeah. Or what you could do is you could save all of your feed bags, save all the feed bags that you've been gathering up for the last 10 years, and you could just fill those up with sand and put them in the gap. And then you won't have, you won't have that, you won't be so depth. You know what gabions are? I don't know what gabions are. Oh, the like, barriers, like, right? Yeah. Yeah. Water, like, is that the ones that you put water We use now, but yeah. the gabions, um, you can just take, like, fucking this, this fencing, right? You can take cattle panels, make a big circle or rectangle with them, mm -hmm. wire them together, and then fill them with gravel. And that's a gabion. You can use it for, you know, whatever. Uh if you're filling it with gravel, it's probably more on the lines of stopping a vehicle, right? Keep stopping a vehicle from smashing in through your perimeter. Um, again, I wouldn't. If you're if you're thinking about bullets, I wouldn't fill any container with anything that I wouldn't. Because of ricochet. Because it Cause ricochet it accelerate the fragmentation. Now that fragmentation slows down exponentially, so it's it's not going to fly through the air like a bullet would fly through the air. But still, you don't want to get hit in the face. What if you filled them with, with concrete? A piece of rock? It's going to take a lot longer for it to be a problem, but concrete, I mean, concrete would be good, but then 
I don't know. I, don't, I feel like you're not moving these, so it doesn't matter. Concrete. It's just uh, more expensive. Because yeah. here, because here in uh, here in Tennessee, or here in our locale, not just Tennessee, you could get um, dirty sand for free. Yeah, the trucking bills. All you pay. Yeah, you just pay the pay the movement of how you, you know dirty that? sand. Uh, because that's from, what we made that berm out there from, originally. Yeah, from being here, I, th- I think the yeah. truck driver said free. I've I've wanted dirty. I've wanted some sand to fill up sand bags. We have a glass plant here. They make glass and they take um, the sand. They pipe the sand miles and miles and miles away in liquid, and then it comes out, and they actually make it into glass at the where it de- where the destination is. But some process in mining the sand here, we have something called dirty. I don't know what makes it. I don't know what chemicals in there that's going to kill you, but I would assume something probably. Probably. Is. Well, it. So I like the idea of the IBC totes because you could just fill them up, right? So you have sand on hand mm-hmm. or gravel or whatever while it's just chilling in case you ever need it in the future. Dump it out or whatever, but we can move it with forks. Maybe. No, I can move it with forks. Have you filled up one up with sand? Yeah. Because I, I would assume Well, that, I've moved them with water. Because I, Yeah, but I would assume that... I'm going to get it. Some mathematician's going to get on here and be like, what the hell are you talking about? I would assume that... Uh, it can't weigh more than the liquid. Yes, it can. Okay. Because it's denser. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It's it's like uh, how fast is I just f- moved a bunch with firewood in them. I still think, yeah, though... Yeah, the sand will weigh more. I, think, I still think okay, the we'll sand's going to weigh a ton. D- Brandel's going to get a shovel when we're done here. Okay. Sand definitely weighs more. Yeah, I I, I would That's think... That's why th- sand doesn't float. So it should be a cubic foot. What's Just look up. What's a cubic foot of sand weigh? Cubic um, foot, fifty pounds. I mean, no, a cubic yard, pounds? cubic yard, a cubic three yard by three. Yeah, because the Heavy. because those play sandbags are fifty pounds. Yeah, or uh, more. I just feel like if I, I, I mean, yeah, you're fucking, your, your damn Kubota could lift it. Cubic yard is two thousand four hundred pounds. Yeah, we can lift that. One point two tons. Yeah, we can do. That. But is that a is that is a tote just a cubic yard? It might be a little three bit more. Three. Yeah, I think three by three. Okay. I think they're like forty inches by forty by forty. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure the Kubota could lift it, but it's it's going to be heavy. You're not going to want to get the guys out there with sticks and put them in there and lift, you know chariot lift it. And shit. That's not going to work. Can't attach goats to it and have them pull it around. All right. Well, we got to go film this. Oh yeah, we got to go film this. We're going to do some other stuff. So and it's already late because someone was late. Had a, had does that. hey does the does any of the any of the uh, any of the actors, do they get a, a performance bonus because uh, the crew was late? <laughs> All right, guys, that was episode 22 or 23, Pulling the Thread podcast, and we will talk to you next week. Yeah, man, I'm talking about Willis, one of the realest to try my family.